Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 26. David Soule, an American and British actor and singer whose career spanned five decades, passed away at the age of 80 on January 4th. Best known for his portrayal of Detective Kenneth Hutch Hutchinson in the iconic television series Starsky and Hutch, Soul's career was marked by a rich tapestry of roles that showcased his versatile talent. Born in Chicago, Illinois, on August 28, 1943, Soul's early life was characterized by frequent moves due to his father's work, fostering his fluency in German and Spanish. His artistic journey began in earnest after being inspired by fellow students in Mexico City, leading to his first onstage appearance in a Minneapolis club. Soul's passion for music was a constant throughout his life, marked by hits like Don't Give Up On Us and Silver Lady, which topped charts in the US, UK, and Canada. Soul's acting career took off with appearances in shows like Flipper and Star Trek, but it was his role in Starsky and Hutch that cemented his place in television history. His performance, alongside co-star Paul Michael Glazer, captured the hearts of audiences and remains a beloved classic. Soul's directing of several episodes of the show further displayed his multifaceted skills in the entertainment industry. Beyond Starsky and Hutch, Soul's contributions to television and film were extensive, including roles in The Manians of America, Casablanca, and the miniseries adaptation of Stephen King's Salem's Lot. In the mid-1990s, he moved to the United Kingdom, achieving success on the West End stage and in British TV shows like Holby City and Lewis. David Soule's personal life was as full as his professional one, marked by love, struggles, and ultimately, redemption. His battle with health issues in later years was a testament to his resilience and enduring spirit. Number 25. Glynis Johns, the esteemed British actress celebrated for her role as the feminist icon Mrs. Banks in the 1964 classic Mary Poppins, passed away at the age of 100 in Los Angeles. Her passing was announced by her longtime manager Mitch Clem, who confirmed that she died on January 4th morning at an assisted living home. She leaves behind a legacy embellished with intelligence, wit, and an enduring love for performance, as well as her grandson Thomas and three great-grandchildren. John's remarkable career in film, TV, and stage spanned nearly nine decades, beginning with her film debut in the 1938 romantic drama South Riding. Her talent was soon recognized with a Best Acting Award for her role in the 1941 war-era drama 49th Parallel. Born in South Africa and raised in the United Kingdom, John's was a dynamic presence in Hollywood, starring in numerous films and TV shows. Her performance in the 1960 film The Sundowners alongside Deborah Kerr and Robert Mitchum earned her an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress. However, it was her role in Disney's Mary Poppins that immortalized her in the hearts of audiences worldwide. As Mrs. Banks, Johns brought to life a vibrant, upbeat character who championed women's rights with the memorable song Sister Suffragette. Her portrayal not only entertained, but also inspired, highlighting the charm and depth of her acting prowess. She was also renowned for her stage work, notably originating the role of Desiree Armfelt in the 1973 Broadway play A Little Night Music. Her performance won her a Tony Award, and her rendition of Send in the Clowns remains a testament to her unique vocal style and artistic versatility. Even as she continued to grace the screen in the 1980s and 1990s, John's spirit and wit never waned. Celebrating her 100th birthday, she remained as vivacious and sharp as ever, embodying the timeless grace of a true Hollywood legend. Number 24. Christian Oliver, a talented U.S. actor, along with his two beloved daughters, Medita Klepser, age 10, and Annick Klepser, age 12, tragically passed away in a plane crash near Petit Nevis Island in the Eastern Caribbean. 
The devastating incident occurred on January 4th as the plane was en route to St. Lucia. Oliver, who was 51 at the time of his death, was born in Germany and had carved a significant niche in the world of film and television. Oliver's career was marked by a diverse array of roles, showcasing his versatility as an actor. He gained recognition for his performances in notable films such as the 2008 Speed Racer and The Good German, a 2006 World War II film directed by Steven Soderbergh, starring alongside George Clooney and Kate Blanchett. His role in Saved by the Bell, The New Class, as Brian Keller, a Swiss transfer student, further cemented his place in the hearts of a wider television audience. The loss of Oliver and his daughters is deeply felt, not only by their family, but also by the entertainment community and fans worldwide. Their untimely demise has left an irreplaceable void in the lives of many. The bravery and selflessness shown by fishermen and divers who rushed to the crash site are a poignant reminder of the communal spirit in times of tragedy. As an actor, Christian Oliver brought joy, entertainment, and artistry to his audience. His contributions to film and television will continue to be cherished and remembered by his fans and colleagues. His legacy is not just in the roles he portrayed, but also in the warmth and spirit he brought to each performance. Number 23. Les McCann, the jazz pioneer known for his seminal hit, Compared to What?, passed away at 88 in Los Angeles after a battle with pneumonia. A self-taught pianist and vocalist from Lexington, Kentucky, McCann's influence on the soul jazz genre is immeasurable. Beginning his career in the 1950s, McCann was a musical force, winning a singing contest while serving in the U.S. Navy and later appearing on The Ed Sullivan Show. His unique blend of jazz, soul, and funk set him apart, earning him the admiration of legends like Quincy Jones and Miles Davis. He embarked on a global tour and released an array of albums, beginning with Le McCann Limited Plays the Truth in 1960. McCann's most iconic work, compared to what, recorded live at the 1969 Montreux Jazz Festival with saxophonist Eddie Harris, became a hallmark of protest music. Its powerful lyrics, combined with McCann's gospel-style vocals and jazzy riffs, spoke boldly against war, greed, and injustice. This track not only resonated with audiences of his time, but also became a favorite among later generations, influencing artists like Dr. Dre and a tribe called Quest. A mentor to many, including Roberta Flack, whom he helped introduce to Atlantic Records, McCann was a visionary infusing jazz with other music forms. His albums like Talk to the People, Layers, and Another Beginning further showcased his expansive talent and creativity. Les McCann leaves behind a legacy as a trailblazer in the music industry, a master of improvisation, and a voice for social justice. His contributions to jazz and soul music will continue to inspire and influence musicians and fans alike for generations to come. Number 1. Linda Jackson, a formidable actress known for her unyielding personality and a successful politician, passed away at the age of 87. Her death, reported on the 15th of June 2023, marks the end of a remarkable journey for a woman who was as respected for her artistic talent as she was for her political acumen. Born on the 9th of May 1936 in Birkenhead, Wirral, Jackson's early life was far from glamorous. She initially worked at a chemist's shop before earning a scholarship to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Jackson's acting career was marked by intense and powerful performances. She gained fame at the Royal Shakespeare Company and won her first Oscar in 1969 for the film Women in Love. Her portrayal of Queen Elizabeth Thrayer in the BBC series Elizabeth R. was particularly notable, showcasing her versatility and commitment to her craft. Beyond her artistic achievements, Jackson was known for her forthright personality, often challenging the norms of her profession and society at large. In a surprising turn, at the height of her acting career, Jackson shifted to politics, becoming a labor MP. Her political career was as impactful as her acting, characterized by her vocal opposition to Thatcherism and her critique of Tony Blair's new labor. She remained in politics until 2015, after which she returned to acting, demonstrating her undiminished talent in roles such as King Lear at the Old Vic and winning a Tony Award on Broadway. Jackson's life was a tapestry of bold choices and remarkable achievements, 
both on stage and in the political arena, her legacy is one of fearless expression and relentless pursuit of truth, both in art and in public service. Number 20. David McCallum, a celebrated Scottish-born actor, passed away at the age of 90. Known for his dynamic and versatile acting career, McCallum died of natural causes on a Monday in New York. He gained widespread recognition in the 1960s as the mysterious Soviet agent Ilya Kuryakin in the hit spy drama The Man from UNCLE, a role that brought him international fame and several Emmy and Golden Globe nominations. Later, McCallum became a familiar face on the popular TV show NCIS, playing the role of a medical examiner. His contribution to the show was immense, with his colleagues remembering him for his warmth and humor. McCallum's acting range was broad, evident in his roles in Colditz, The Invisible Man and Sapphire and Steel, where he starred alongside Joanna Lumley as a time-traveling agent. Aside from his illustrious acting career, McCallum had a passion for music, demonstrated in the 1960s when he recorded four albums for Capitol Records. His musical talent was further highlighted when Dr. Dre sampled one of his tracks, The Edge, for the hit single, The Next Episode. Born in Glasgow to classical musician parents, McCallum initially pursued music before venturing into acting. His career spanned various genres, including significant roles in films like The Great Escape, The Greatest Story Ever Told, and A Night to Remember. He also guest-starred in TV series like Perry Mason and The Outer Limits. McCallum's son Peter described him as the kindest, coolest, most patient and loving father, who always put family first. His colleagues and fans remember him as a true professional and a legend in his field. His passing leaves a significant void in the acting world, but his legacy continues through his extensive work in film, television, and music. Number 19. Matthew Perry, the beloved actor known for his role as Chandler Bing on the iconic sitcom Friends, has passed away at the age of 54. Perry, a fixture in American television, was found dead at his Los Angeles home, leaving fans and the entertainment world in mourning. His journey from a young actor in Ottawa, where he crossed paths with future Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, to international stardom, is a tale of talent, humor, and resilience. Born in 1969 in Massachusetts and raised in Canada, Perry's acting career began with roles in shows like Boys Will Be Boys and Growing Pains. However, it was his portrayal of the sarcastic, lovable Chandler Bing that catapulted him to fame. Friends, which aired from 1994 to 2004, became one of the most successful TV shows ever, with its finale drawing 52.5 million viewers. Despite his on-screen success, Perry faced personal challenges, including battles with addiction to painkillers and alcohol. His candor about these struggles, including admitting to memory gaps during the filming of Friends, won him admiration for his vulnerability. Perry's talent extended beyond sitcoms. He earned critical acclaim for his roles in Aaron Sorkin's The West Wing and Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, showcasing his range as an actor. His filmography includes memorable films like Fools Rush In and The Whole Nine Yards. Colleagues and fans alike remember Perry for his wit and warmth. Co-stars from Friends and other projects have expressed their grief and shared memories of his kindness and humor. Perry's legacy extends beyond his screen appearances. His openness about his struggles with addiction and his efforts to overcome them have been an inspiration to many. Though he never married or had children, Perry's impact on television and his contribution to popular culture are indelible. His final Instagram post, a serene image of him in a rooftop pool, has become a poignant reminder of his enduring appeal. Matthew Perry leaves behind a legacy of laughter, honesty, and a reminder of the human behind the celebrity. Number 18. Andre Brauger, renowned for his commanding presence on screen, especially as Captain Raymond Holt in the popular TV series Brooklyn Nine-Nine, passed away at 61 after a brief illness. His death on December 11th was confirmed by his publicist, Jennifer Allen. Braher's illustrious career spanned both dramatic and comedic roles, earning him two Emmy Awards among 11 nominations. Born in Chicago, Braher's talent was evident early on, leading him to graduate from Stanford University and later attend the Juilliard School. His breakthrough role in the 1989 film Glory, 
set the stage for a career marked by versatility and depth. Rocker's performance in Homicide, Life on the Street, and Thief garnered critical acclaim, earning him Emmy wins in 1998 and 2006, respectively. Beyond the screen, Brar was known for his professionalism and warmth. Co-star Terry Crews from Brooklyn Nine-Nine paid a heartfelt tribute to Brar's talent and mentorship. His role as the stoic yet endearing Captain Holt won him four Emmy nominations and a special place in the hearts of fans. Brar's contributions to film include roles in Primal Fear, Salt, and City of Angels. However, his portrayal of Detective Frank Pembleton in Homicide, Life on the Street, and his recent role in She Said, are notable highlights of a diverse career. Colleagues like David Simon and Mark Evan Jackson expressed profound grief and admiration for Brar's unmatched skill and humanity. His love for singing and his joy in performance were fondly remembered by co-star Joe Lotruglio. Andre Brauer leaves a legacy defined by his powerful performances and the deep impact he had on his peers and audiences worldwide. He is survived by his wife, actress Ami Brabson, and three sons, leaving behind a legacy that will continue to inspire and entertain for generations. Number 17. Sir Michael Gambon, celebrated for his portrayal of Professor Albus Dumbledore in the Harry Potter films, passed away at the age of 82. His death following a bout of pneumonia has drawn tributes from co-stars and admirers worldwide, recognizing his remarkable contributions to stage, television, and film. Born in Dublin and raised in London, Gambon's distinguished career spanned over six decades, earning him four BAFTAs and numerous other accolades. Gambon, who began his stage career in Ireland, became a prominent figure in the acting world as part of Laurence Olivier's National Theatre Company. His versatility was evident through his acclaimed performances in a variety of roles, from the complex detective in The Singing Detective to the unforgettable portrayal of Jules Maigret in the ITV adaptation of Georges Simenon's novels. His filmography is equally impressive, featuring roles in The Cook, The Thief, His Wife and Her Lover, Sleepy Hollow and Gosford Park, among others. However, it was his role as Dumbledore that brought him global recognition, seamlessly taking over the role from the late Richard Harris and becoming a beloved figure to a new generation of fans. Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and other Harry Potter stars remembered Gambon for his effortless acting prowess and the warmth he brought to the set. Fiona Shaw described him as a brilliant, magnificent trickster, a testament to his skill and charisma. Sir Michael's impact extended beyond his roles. He was known for his humility and humor, characteristics that endeared him to colleagues and audiences alike. His knighthood in 1998 was a fitting recognition of his contributions to the arts. Remembered as the Great Gambon, his legacy in the acting world is indelible, marked by his extraordinary talent and the diverse characters he brought to life. Number 16. Lance Reddick, acclaimed for his roles in The Wire and the John Wick film series, passed away suddenly at the age of 60 due to natural causes. His death was confirmed by his publicist, Mia Hansen, who asked for privacy for the actor's family during this difficult time. Reddick, a Baltimore native, was in the midst of promoting the upcoming fourth installment of the John Wick movies, which is set to release on March 24th. Reddick's career spanned over 25 years, featuring more than a dozen films and television shows. He was widely recognized for his portrayal of Sharon, the meticulous hotel concierge at the Continental Hotel in the John Wick series, and for his breakout role as Baltimore Police Lieutenant Cedric Daniels in The Wire. This critically acclaimed series, running from 2002 to 2008, offered a gritty, realistic view of the narcotic scene in Baltimore. Apart from acting, Reddick was known for his voice work, including in the TV series Rick and Morty. His artistic journey began with classical music studies at the Eastman School of Music, followed by the Yale School of Drama. Reddick's dedication to his craft earned him a SAG Award nomination in 2021 for One Night in Miami. Reddick's impact extended beyond the screen, with a notable presence in projects like the Resident Evil Netflix series and Godzilla vs. Kong. In a 2009 interview with the Los Angeles Times, Reddick expressed his commitment to artistry, acknowledging the extra effort he felt necessary due to the challenges of being a black actor in the industry.
Lance Reddick is survived by his wife Stephanie, daughter Yvonne Nicole Reddick, and son Christopher Reddick. His passing follows two years after the death of Michael K. Williams, his The Wire co-star. Reddick's unexpected departure marks the loss of a talented and versatile actor who left a significant mark in both television and film. Number 15. Lee Sun Kyun, a renowned South Korean actor celebrated for his role in the Academy Award-winning film Parasite, has passed away at 48 in Seoul. His body was discovered in a car near Waryong Park. Lee was involved in a legal investigation, the details of which remain private. Following his passing, his family has opted not to have an autopsy, and authorities are investigating to clarify the circumstances of his demise. In Parasite, Lee significantly contributed to the movie's historic success as the first non-English language film to win the Best Picture Oscar, playing the patriarch of the affluent Park family. His career spanned over two decades, earning him recognition both in South Korea and internationally. Lee's life encountered difficulties, including challenging allegations which he consistently denied. These issues profoundly impacted his public persona and professional life, leading to his departure from the TV series No Way Out and affecting his endorsements. The news of Lee's death has elicited a wave of reactions online, with many people expressing sadness over his challenges and admiration for his artistic work. He leaves behind his wife, actress Jun Hai Jin, and their two young sons. Lee's death underscores the intense pressures and societal standards faced by celebrities in South Korea. Number 14. Henry Kissinger, a towering figure in American foreign policy and former Secretary of State, passed away at 100. Born in Germany in 1923 and fleeing Nazi persecution, Kissinger became a United States citizen in 1943. He served under Presidents Nixon and Ford, shaping United States foreign policy during the tumultuous Cold War era. Kissinger's legacy is marked by significant achievements and controversies. He played a crucial role in ending the United States' involvement in the Vietnam War, opening relations with China, and mediating the Yom Kippur War in the Middle East. His approach, known as Realpolitik, prioritized strategic interests, often sparking criticism for overlooking human rights issues. Critics have accused Kissinger of war crimes, notably for the United States bombing campaign in Cambodia during the Vietnam War, which led to civilian casualties and upheaval. He faced backlash for supporting authoritarian regimes, including Augusto Pinochet in Chile. These actions made him a divisive figure in international politics. Despite these controversies, Kissinger remained a respected voice in diplomacy. He received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1973 for the Paris Peace Accords, though the award was contentious. Post-political life saw him as a sought-after advisor and commentator, engaging with every United States president from Kennedy to Biden and Chinese leaders from Mao Zedong to Xi Jinping. Kissinger's impact on global affairs was immense, leaving a complex legacy that combines diplomatic triumphs with profound moral questions. His death closes a century-long chapter of significant influence on world events. Number 13. Silvio Berlusconi, the former Prime Minister of Italy and a notable figure in Italian politics, passed away at the age of 86. His passing at San Raffaele Hospital in Milan marks a significant chapter in Italian political history. Berlusconi, recognized for his tenacity amid numerous controversies, served as Italy's Prime Minister on four occasions, becoming the longest-serving leader in the country's post-war era. Born in Milan in 1936, Berlusconi's rise from a vacuum cleaner salesman to one of Italy's wealthiest individuals showcases his remarkable entrepreneurial skills. He established a vast business network that included television networks and the AC Milan Football Club, before transitioning into politics in the 1990s. Berlusconi's time in politics was characterized by both controversy and charisma. He faced various allegations, yet he maintained popularity among many Italians. His political influence continued into his later years with his party, Forza Italia, joining a coalition under Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney last year. Global leaders have expressed their condolences upon his passing, 
Vladimir Putin referred to him as a true friend, while French President Emmanuel Macron acknowledged him as a pivotal contemporary Italian figure. The White House recognized Italy as a significant United State ally, noting Berlusconi's contribution to bilateral relations. Despite facing health challenges, including a rare form of blood cancer and recovering from COVID-19, Berlusconi remained actively engaged in politics until his final days. His death is a loss not only for Italy, but for the international political community, highlighting a life that profoundly influenced both national and global affairs. Number 12. Paco Rabanne, the iconic perfume and fashion designer, passed away at the age of 88 at his home in France. No cause was given. Known for his revolutionary and eccentric designs, Rabanne made an indelible mark on the fashion world. His death was confirmed by Puig, the parent company of his brand, recognizing his radical vision of fashion and enduring legacy. Born in Spain's Basque region, Raban's early life was marked by tragedy and displacement due to the Spanish Civil War. Moving to Paris with his family, he studied architecture at l'École Nationale des Beaux-Arts, initially working in construction before venturing into fashion. He designed jewelry for prestigious houses like Givenchy, Dior and Balenciaga, later launching his own fashion house in 1966. Raban's debut collection, 12 Unwearable Dresses in Contemporary Materials, was controversial for its use of unconventional materials like metal. His bold avant-garde approach set him apart in the fashion industry. In 1968, he expanded into the perfume industry, creating fragrances that remain popular, such as Calandre and Lady Million. Raban's contributions to fashion extended beyond design. He was a pioneer in online marketing, launching a fragrance on the internet in the mid-1990s. Known for his provocative statements, he claimed to have lived multiple lives and had spiritual experiences. Despite retiring from fashion in 1999, Raban's influence remained significant. He was hailed as a visionary by the fashion community, with his brand describing him as among the most seminal fashion figures of the 20th century. His creativity and innovation continue to inspire, ensuring his legacy endures in the fashion and fragrance world. Number 11. Frank Borman, a legendary NASA astronaut and commander of the historic Apollo 8 mission, has died at the age of 95 in Billings, Montana. As the leader of the first crewed space mission to orbit the moon in 1968, Borman played a pivotal role in advancing human space exploration. His journey around the moon allowed humanity to see the far side for the first time, marking a monumental moment in space history. Borman's contributions to space exploration were recognized by NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, who hailed him as one of NASA's best and a true American hero. Nelson also noted Borman's deep passion for aviation and exploration, as well as his dedication to his wife, Susan. The Apollo 8 mission, under Borman's leadership, was groundbreaking as it was the first time humans ventured beyond Earth's orbit. The mission captured the iconic Earthrise photo, showing Earth appearing over the lunar horizon, a powerful image credited with influencing the environmental movement and the establishment of Earth Day. Borman's career in aviation began in the Air Force in 1950, where he served as a fighter pilot, operational pilot, and instructor. He was selected by NASA to instruct at the Aerospace Research Pilot School in California. Prior to Apollo 8, Borman was part of the Gemini 7 mission in 1965, a significant milestone in space rendezvous techniques. After retiring from NASA, Borman took on the challenge of leading Eastern Airlines in 1975. His legacy in space exploration was further cemented with his induction into the United States Astronaut Hall of Fame in 1993 and the naming of a section of Expressway after him. Frank Borman's death marks the loss of a pioneering astronaut who not only ventured into unknown realms of space but also inspired generations to look beyond our planet. Number 10. Tori Bowie, an acclaimed American sprinter and three-time Olympic medalist, has tragically passed away at the age of 32. Her remarkable achievements included a gold medal in the 4x100 meters relay in silver in the 100 meters at the Rio 2016 Olympics, as well as a bronze in the 200 meters. In 2017, 
Bowie solidified her status as a top athlete by winning the 100 meters at the World Championships in London. USA Track and Field honored Bowie, stating her impact on the sport is immeasurable and acknowledging she will be greatly missed. World Athletics and Team USA also expressed deep sorrow over her passing. Team USA remembered her as an admirable team member and a proud representative of the country. Fellow athletes, including current 100 meters world champion Shelly Ann Fraser Price and two-time men's world 200 meters champion Noah Lyles, shared personal tributes, reflecting on her vibrant energy and competitive spirit. Bowie's transition from long jump to sprinting in 2014 was meteoric, quickly becoming the world's fastest woman that year. She stands as the only American woman to win an Olympic or world 100 meters title since Carmelita Jeter in 2011. Icon Management, Bowie's agent, expressed their heartbreak, describing her as a champion and a beacon of light. Her death leaves a significant void in the world of athletics, taking away not just a phenomenal athlete, but also a beloved friend and teammate. Number 9. Cormac McCarthy, the esteemed Pulitzer Prize-winning American author, known for his distinctive narrative style and profound works such as The Road and No Country for Old Men, has passed away at 89. His novels, often exploring dark and complex themes, have left a lasting impact on literature and cinema. Fellow author Stephen King and Booker Prize winner John Banville, among others, paid homage to McCarthy's extraordinary talent and influence. Banville described McCarthy as a giant figure and unique in the literary landscape, particularly praising Blood Meridian, McCarthy's 1985 novel set in the 19th century American West, as his masterpiece. McCarthy's writing, often violent and set against the backdrop of the American frontier and post-apocalyptic worlds, was compelling and unparalleled. Despite his novel's grim themes, McCarthy was remembered for his dedication to his craft and his influence on readers worldwide. Penguin Random House, his publisher, acknowledged that he had changed the course of literature and praised his unwavering dedication to exploring the power of the written word. McCarthy, a private individual in life, seldom gave interviews or made public appearances. In a rare interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2007, he shared his view on writing, advising that one should focus more on the act of writing itself than on thinking about how to write. His death of natural causes at his home in Santa Fe, New Mexico, marks the end of a remarkable era in American literature. McCarthy's legacy, encompassing novels, screenplays, and short stories, remains a significant part of the literary world, offering timeless and emotionally truthful narratives. Number 8. Tina Turner, known as the Queen of Rock and Roll for her powerful voice and dynamic stage presence, has passed away at the age of 83. Born Anna Mae Bullock on November 26, 1939, in Nutbush, Tennessee, Turner's rise from challenging beginnings to global fame is a tale of extraordinary resilience and talent. Turner's career ascended after joining Ike Turner's band, The Kings of Rhythm, later forming the famous duo, Ike and Tina Turner. Despite their success with hits like Proud Mary, Tina endured hardships, which she bravely shared with the public, becoming a beacon of resilience and empowerment. Her transformation into a solo artist marked a significant turning point. The 1983 release, Let's Stay Together, signaled her resurgence, followed by the highly acclaimed album Private Dancer, featuring classics like What's Love Got to Do With It? Her role in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome and the film's hit song elevated her to a pop culture legend. Tina Turner's influence went beyond music, she became an inspirational figure, particularly in advocating for overcoming challenges and adversity. Her induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and a musical celebrating her life underscore her lasting impact. Tina Turner's passing is a profound loss, leaving behind a legacy of a genre-defining artist who inspired many with her unyielding spirit. Number 7. Raquel Welch, a renowned American actress known for her glamour and charisma, passed away at the age of 82 following a brief illness. She gained prominence in the 1960s, notably for her role in the 1966 film One Million Years B.C., where her portrayal in a memorable outfit made her an international icon. Her performance in The Three Musketeers in 1974 also earned her a Golden Globe. 
Born Joe Raquel Tejada in 1940, Welch's early years in California were marked by achievements in teen beauty contests and working as a local weather forecaster. Her ascent in Hollywood was highlighted by roles in A House Is Not A Home and alongside Elvis Presley in Roostabout. Her significant breakthrough came with Fantastic Voyage and One Million Years B.C., with the latter featuring her in a notable deerskin outfit. Welch, often recognized for her striking appearance, consistently sought to emphasize her skills and contributions as an accomplished actress. Her memoir, Raquel, Beyond the Cleavage, offered insights into her life, both personal and professional, and her perspective on the film industry. With a career that spanned over five decades, Welch appeared in more than 30 films and numerous TV shows. Her roles in Lady in Cement, Myra Breckenridge, and Right to Die were particularly significant. Beyond her acting career, she ventured into the fashion and beauty industry, launching a successful line of wigs, jewelry, skincare, and makeup. Welch's passing has led to an outpouring of tributes from colleagues, fans, and admirers, including Reese Witherspoon and Viola Davis, who commended her elegance, professionalism, and enduring impact. Her legacy in the entertainment industry remains influential, as she is celebrated for her talent, beauty, and her role in shaping and evolving Hollywood. Number 6. Barry Humphreys, the Australian comedian and actor renowned for his iconic character Dame Edna Everidge, has died at 89. Humphreys passed away peacefully in a Sydney hospital following complications from hip surgery. His illustrious career spanned several decades, making him a cherished figure in the world of entertainment. Humphreys's most famous creation, Dame Edna Everidge, became a household name in the UK in the 1970s, leading to her own TV chat show, The Dame Edna Everidge Experience in the late 1980s. His other well-known persona was the lecherous drunk Sir Les Patterson. Humphrey's family remembered him as maintaining his brilliant mind, unique wit, and generosity of spirit until the end. Born in Melbourne, Humphreys moved to London in 1959, where he became a leading figure in the British comedy scene. His work was characterized by its absurdist avant-garde style, and he was a contemporary of British comedy legends like Alan Bennett and Dudley Moore. Tributes poured in from across the entertainment industry. Dame Joan Bakewell remembered him for his extremely brilliant mind, while comedian Rory Bremner described him as lightning-quick subversive, mischievous and savagely funny. Actor Paul Feig recalled Humphreys as a true superstar and a childhood idol. Humphreys was also known for his landscape painting and voice acting, including voicing the shark Bruce in the Pixar film Finding Nemo. He was honored with an Officer of the Order of Australia in 1982 for his contributions to entertainment. Despite later controversies in his career, his legacy as a comedy legend endures. He leaves behind his wife, Lizzie Spender, and four children. Number 5. Charlie Munger, the celebrated investor and vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, has passed away at the age of 99. Munger, widely recognized as Warren Buffett's confidant and business partner, played a crucial role in shaping the investment strategy of Berkshire Hathaway, which has grown into a market juggernaut with a valuation of $785 billion. His death comes just weeks before what would have been his 100th birthday on January 1st. Warren Buffett, the renowned investor and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, paid tribute to Munger, acknowledging that Berkshire's success would not have been possible without Munger's inspiration, wisdom, and participation. Known for his straightforward approach, Munger often provided critical input on Buffett's investment decisions. Tributes from prominent figures in the business world highlighted Munger's impact. Apple CEO Tim Cook remembered Munger as a titan of business and a keen observer of the world. Brian Moynihan, CEO of Bank of America, praised Munger's legendary status in the investment community and the wisdom he shared. Munger's personal fortune, estimated at $2.3 billion, was significantly smaller than Buffett's, but his influence in the investment world was profound. Known for his colorful and candid commentary, often sprinkled with swear words, Munger was a favorite among Berkshire shareholders for his straightforwardness at the company's annual meetings. His passing is not just a loss to Berkshire Hathaway, but to the entire business and investment community. Number 4. Sinead O'Connor, 
the Irish singer known for her powerful voice and distinctive spirit, has passed away at the age of 56. O'Connor's music served as a refuge from a challenging childhood characterized by adversity. Her nonconformity to societal and industry norms not only established her as a global music star, but also as a symbol of uniqueness in the pop world. Born on December 8, 1966, in Dublin, Siniad Marie Bernadette O'Connor had a tumultuous early life. Her journey to fame began with a gifted guitar during her time at Dublin's and Grianon Training Center. She first recorded with the Irish band In Tuanua, quickly gaining recognition in the music scene. O'Connor's debut album in 1987, The Lion and the Cobra, was critically acclaimed and earned her a Grammy nomination. Her international breakthrough came with the 1990 cover of Prince's Nothing Compares to You, notable for its compelling music video. Her career, however, encountered its share of controversies, including a notable televised protest. Throughout her life, O'Connor faced various challenges, including mental health struggles and intense public attention. Despite these obstacles, she continued to create music that connected deeply with audiences globally. O'Connor's legacy in the arts is marked by her fearless authenticity and her commitment to tackling complex personal and societal themes in her work. Number 3. Lisa Marie Presley, the only child of Elvis Presley and a talented singer in her own right, has passed away at 54. Her mother Priscilla Presley confirmed her death, expressing deep sorrow and asking for privacy during this difficult time. Lisa Marie suffered a cardiac arrest, as reported by U.S. media, and was found unresponsive in her bedroom. Renowned for her passionate and strong personality, Lisa Marie followed in her father's footsteps, carving out her own music career. Her 2003 debut studio album was a commercial success and received positive reviews. She was also known for her high-profile marriages, including to Michael Jackson and Nicolas Cage. Lisa Marie's last public appearance was at the Golden Globe Awards in Beverly Hills, where she watched Austin Butler win Best Actor for portraying her father in Baz Luhrmann's biopic, Elvis. In an emotional speech, Butler thanked the Presley family for their support. Her life was not without personal tragedy, particularly the death of her son, Benjamin Q, in 2020. Lisa Marie wrote an essay on grief, sharing her struggles with loss since her father's death when she was nine. Tributes from celebrities like Tom Hanks, Rita Wilson, Latoya Jackson, and Bette Midler poured in, remembering Lisa Marie's kindness, vulnerability, and talent. Her death has left fans and friends mourning the loss of a unique and gifted artist who bravely faced life's challenges while upholding her family's legacy. Number 2. Burt Bacharach, one of pop music's most celebrated composers, has passed away at the age of 94. Known for his unique melodies and lavish orchestral arrangements, Bacharach was a pivotal figure in 20th century songwriting. His enduring hits, such as I Say a Little Prayer, Walk on By, and What the World Needs Now is Love, have left an indelible mark on the music industry. In partnership with lyricist Hal David, Bacharach crafted numerous memorable movie themes, including What's New Pussycat, Alfie, and The Look of Love. His collaboration with Dionne Warwick produced some of the era's most significant hits, establishing her as a major recording artist. Bacharach's death at his home in Los Angeles was confirmed by his publicist, Tina Browsom. Over his career, he achieved more than 50 chart hits in the U.S. and U.K., working with a variety of artists across different genres. Bacharach's significant contributions to music were recognized with three Oscars, two Golden Globes, and six Grammy Awards. He was known for his sophisticated debonair pop style that resonated even amidst the raucous sounds of rock and roll. His collaboration with Warwick alone resulted in 39 consecutive U.S. hits. Aside from his professional achievements, Bacharach was remembered for his personal life, including his marriages and the tragic loss of his daughter Nikki. His legacy continues through his timeless music, which remains a cherished part of popular culture. Number 1. Tony Bennett, one of the greatest crooners in pop and jazz music history, has passed away at the age of 96. Known for his smooth voice and classic hits like I Left My Heart in San Francisco, Bennett's career spanned over eight decades, earning him a revered place in the annals of American music. 
His death was confirmed by his publicist, Sylvia Weiner, stating he passed away in his hometown of New York. Bennett's impact on music was profound, with hits like The Way You Look Tonight and Body and Soul, and his collaborations with stars across genres from Lady Gaga to Frank Sinatra. Sinatra himself once hailed Bennett as the best singer in the business. Bennett's accolades include 20 Grammy Awards, among them a Lifetime Achievement Award, underscoring his monumental contribution to music. The world has responded with an outpouring of tributes. Sir Elton John referred to Bennett as the classiest singer, man and performer, and other celebrities like Carole King and Hillary Clinton expressed their condolences, celebrating his life and legacy. Bennett's journey from a singing waiter to a legendary musician is a testament to his enduring talent and appeal. His work was not only a reflection of the American songbook, but also an integral part of it. Even in his final days, Bennett was at his piano, singing with the same passion that defined his career. His legacy is immortalized in the timeless music he leaves behind, a treasure trove for generations to come.